Do you know that every day there is increasing international competition for hypersonic weapons? And you know, the US government isn't relenting in its technological advancement. Now we have what is called a hypersonic weapon. These hypersonic weapons have proven more challenging for the majority of anti-ballistic missile systems in use today because of their ability to alter their trajectory and avoid being intercepted, making them an effective first strike weapon as well. In today's video, we will discuss the unveiling of the most massive DARPA missile ever. Stay with me to the very end as I take you through this intriguing journey of advanced technology. Frankly speaking, the process of developing new propulsion technologies can be risky because large amounts of extremely explosive fuel are needed for conventional rockets to function in Earth's atmosphere and launch payloads into space. An example of this is the Saturn V rocket, which was used to launch the Apollo moon missions, an extremely heavy lifter that burned through about 20 tons of volatile fuel every second. Rocket engineers encountered serious issues with the Saturn V's rocket engines during development. These issues were caused by combustion instability, which occurred when the burning propellants experienced abrupt pressure changes that produced hot spots and vibrations powerful enough to destroy the engine. Imagine that. What a challenging propelling system. According to a recent Wall Street Journal article by Sharon Weinberger, she said, hypersonic missiles are game changers and the US doesn't have them. The situation is crystal clear. President Vladimir Putin announced the deployment and serial production of a new hypersonic missile as early as March 2018 in his State of the Nation speech to the Russian Federal Assembly. He asserted that Russia possessed the greatest hypersonic missiles available worldwide. Since the year 2015, various hypersonic missile systems have been actively developed and tested by Russia. The scramjet is the primary class of air-breathing engine used in hypersonic flight. Supersonic combustion ramjets, scramjets in quote, have a more complicated combustion process than ramjets, but they are still able to operate at higher speeds. Scramjets use the forward speed of their host platform by compressing incoming air to supersonic levels. The compressed air is then combined with fuel and ignited to generate thrust. And because scramjets rely on the platform's speed to compress air to supersonic speeds, they can only be used after the platform has achieved high supersonic speeds. As a result of this, scramjet-powered platforms are frequently combined with rocket boosters to raise the platform's speed to what the scramjet needs to function. The dual-mode ramjet, which operates as a ramjet up to supersonic speeds before switching to a scramjet to reach hypersonic speeds when the necessary Mach number is reached, is one suggested solution to this issue. The majority of military rockets and missiles use solid fuel because liquid rocket propellants are highly volatile and difficult to store. Although rockets are a useful tool for getting into space and rely on deflagration combustion for propulsion, they quickly deplete propellant, which makes them unsuitable for sustained hypersonic speed and maneuverability inside the Earth's atmosphere. These were some of the design challenges that brought about Gambit, DARPA's massive missile with a new kind of propulsion system. In a special notice on July 18, 2022, DARPA announced a proposer's day for firms to learn more about their new Gambit missile program, where an overview of the program, outlining its goals and the expected timetable from launch to flight testing was provided. The Gambit program aimed to create and showcase an innovative rotating detonation engine propulsion mechanism, which will facilitate the production of a mass-producible, affordable, high-supersonic, long-range weapon for air-to-ground warfare in an anti-access or area denial A2AD setting. Following this, RTX formerly Raytheon Technologies Corporation was given this development contract for the Gambit program using RDE technology on October 4th, 2023. The first phase of the program was thought to be the main focus of this award, according to RTX, which stated, under the contract, RTX will rely heavily on iterative development of performance models, which will be anchored by real-world data from incremental system tests. Building hardware to carry out a flight weight free jet test will be the focus of future optional phases of the Gambit program. Now let's break it down. Phase 1 of the program was anticipated to last 18 months and is devoted to the RDE propulsion system's preliminary design, direct connect combustor testing, and free jet inlet testing. Testing with a direct connect combustor shows that the RDE can produce combustion with sustained detonation. The testing of the free jet inlet shows that the RDE can take in and accelerate air. Amazing, right? Now let's see what Phase 2 is all about. Phase 2 of the Gambit program will be devoted to the full-scale RDE's detailed design, construction, and testing. The purpose of this test engine is to show how well the RDE performs in a scenario resembling an air-to-ground strike. Phase 2 is expected to take 18 months as well, and include comprehensive propulsion system design in addition to full-scale testing of an RDE in a free jet test facility under flight conditions. So what is the intended result of this phase? Well, 
The results of Phase 2 free jet testing will serve as the basis for a later program to test a weapon prototype in flight using the RDE. The program is also planning to begin the fabrication of a full-scale RDE in preparation for Phase 2 testing. If successful, Phase 2 will lead to the development of a new class of propulsion systems that enables the production of low-cost, high-supersonic, long-range weapons for air-to-ground strikes. The concept was successfully proven in 2020, when a group from the University of Central Florida, in collaboration with the Air Force Research Laboratory's Rotating Detonation Rocket Engine Program, constructed and tested the first-ever operational RDE that fired continuously until its fuel was cut off. The team successfully generated 200 pounds of thrust in the lab using a 3-inch copper test rig. Ever since then, several other programs have adopted a similar approach, with renowned engine manufacturer Pratt & Whitney spearheading the initiative. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency made its next military project, the Hypersonic Gambit Missile, public last year in a tactically surprising move. With the use of cutting-edge propulsion technology, this top-secret program aims to transform contemporary warfare. The Gambit Missile is one of the initiatives that focuses on RDE technology. The Rotating Detonation Engine RDE is a type of propulsion system that has the potential to deliver significant improvements in power output, range, and fuel efficiency over current jet engines while being more lightweight. Dr. Chris Combs, a D. Howard Endowed Professor of Hypersonic and Aerospace Engineering, told Sandbox News that, the detonation process is a more rapid and efficient extraction of energy from fuel, from a thermodynamic standpoint when compared to deflagration. According to Trimble, the detonation shockwave travels at a speed of up to 2,000 meters per second, which is approximately 4,475 miles per hour, as opposed to the deflagration wave used by modern jet engines, which moves at a speed of 10 meters per second. Yeah, we've been talking about rotating detonation engines, RDE for short, and you might still be wondering, so how exactly does rotating detonation engines work? To achieve hypersonic flight, RDEs typically follow these steps. Getting the necessary propellant to the RDE is the first step. Typically, it involves two components, an oxidizer and a fuel. For RDEs, these would be hydrocarbon-based fuel and atmospheric oxygen. An initial source of ignition is required to initiate the detonation process after the propellants have been supplied. This ignition is possible with a spark. Then, the detonation wave spreads throughout the combustion chamber following the first ignition. Preserving a steady and continuous detonation wave is highly essential for maintaining consistent engine performance, but this is a very challenging task. Next, the fuel and oxidizer are compressed and mixed by shock waves resulting from the detonation wave. This compression causes the mixture's temperature and pressure to rise quickly, causing the mixture to burn quickly. Because of this, the Gambit engine was built to withstand pressure, heat, and detonation stress. The nozzle's design enables high temperature and high pressure gases to be effectively converted into directed thrust. The detonation process continues for the duration of the flight. An environmentally friendly, stable detonation within the RDE can be achieved by controlling temperature, pressure, fuel, and oxidizer flow rates and more. The RDE, when kept within safe and ideal performance parameters by utilizing a variety of sensors, monitoring systems, and control mechanisms, can make necessary adjustments. Another question in your mind might be, what differentiates a rotating detonation engine from a pulse detonation engine? You see, a rotating detonation engine more like advanced the concept of PDE. So instead of having the detonation wave travel out the back of the aircraft as propulsion, it travels around a circular channel within the engine itself, as seen in an RDE. However, through tiny holes in the channel, fuel and oxidizers are added, and the rapidly rotating detonation wave strikes and ignites them. The result is an engine that maintains the higher efficiency of a detonation engine, but produces thrust continuously instead of pulses. Multiple detonation waves are concurrently circling the chamber of many rotation detonation engines. According to Trimble, Conventional jet engines experience a complete loss of pressure during combustion, but RDEs experience an increase in pressure during detonation. Consequently, RDE provide higher efficiency. When compared to pulse detonation engines, which require the combustion chamber to be emptied and refilled after each pulse, rotating detonation engines are even more efficient. Even with the difficulties in guaranteeing combustion stability, refining engine controls, and dealing with material limitations, RDEs have a promising future, thanks to ongoing research and development initiatives. RDEs have the potential to revolutionize our knowledge of propulsion systems and pave the way for new possibilities in aerospace capabilities as research and technology develop. The development of a new generation of high-speed weapons that are more capable, dependable and affordable than existing systems is greatly aided by the programogram. RDEs were theoretical until recently, 
The goal of DARPA's Gambit program is to translate theory into reality. If you find value in the content we provide in this channel, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to share your thoughts about the F-22 with us. To get the latest updates, kindly hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.